In ancient times, the Rock of Gibraltar was described as one of the Pillars of Hercules and was known to the Greeks as Mons Kalp, the other pillar being Mons Abila on the African side of the Gibraltar Strait. The Rock of Gibraltar marked the limit to the known world and to pass beyond it was to sail to certain destruction over the bottomless waterfall at the edge of the world. Gibraltar is colloquially known throughout the world as Jib or the Rock. When you first see the Rock of Gibraltar, it is its impressive stature, towering isolated above the surrounding countryside that causes the greatest impact. It is a narrow strip of rock linked to the end of the Spanish Iberian Peninsula by a narrow sandy isthmus. Gibraltar has had a violent past with control of the rock changing hands many times since the 700s with Muslim Moors, Berbers, the Spanish and finally the British all fighting for control over the centuries. This can be seen in the many fortifications which cover the territory. In 1969, as part of Spain's dispute with Britain over sovereignty, Spain closed the border completely, cutting off many families and causing around 4,000 Spaniards who worked on the rock to lose their jobs. The border remained closed until 1982. The tactic of closing the border backfired on the Spanish, with a recent referendum on whether Gibraltar should remain British or be ceded to Spain, resulting in a 99% vote in favour of staying British. Only 44 people voted for Spain. The border opens immediately from Gibraltar Airport you can today walk or drive across into Spain. Gibraltar Airport is unusual, not only due to its proximity to the center of the city or having the sea at both ends of the runway, but also because the runway intersects Winston Churchill Avenue, the main north-south street requiring movable barricades to close when aircraft land or depart. The airport also houses REF Gibraltar. Through the center of the city, Snakes Main Street, the economic and social hub of the territory. As Gibraltar has a VAT and duty-free status, Shopping features heavily on the itinerary of most visitors. forget sometimes that you are not in Britain as you walk the streets surrounded by icons which we are all familiar with over here. Gibraltar has a population of some 28,000 people, but with a land area of only two and a half kilometers, it makes it one of the most densely populated areas in the world. 
The steep rock faces of the east side means that most of the population live on the western slopes. This results in there being not many places within the city of Gibraltar that you are not actively climbing or descending. At the other end of the city is the dockyard. Up until 1982, it was a royal dockyard, employing almost 10,000 Gibraltarians. Most of the yard was sold off to commercial ship repair companies, although the Royal Navy does maintain a base within the dockyard. Within the rock is a vast system of tunnels, with a total length of 34 miles including a two-lane road running through the center of the rock from north to south, four hospitals, galleys, communication centers and garages. When World War II broke out in 1939, Gibraltar's entire civilian population was evacuated to the United Kingdom, Jamaica and Madeira so that Gibraltar could be fortified against the possibility of a German attack. By 1942, there were over 30,000 British soldiers, sailors and airmen on the rock. The tunnel system was expanded into an underground city with up to 10,000 servicemen and women living and working here. The World War II tunnels are by no means the only tunnels within the rock. The most famous are the siege tunnels. The first of these was dug out towards the end of the Four Years' Siege, which lasted from 1779 to 1783. General Elliot, who commanded the garrison, was anxious to bring flanking fire on the Spanish batteries. On the suggestion of Sergeant Major Inks of the Royal Engineers, a tunnel was bored from a point above Willis Battery to communicate with the notch, a natural projection from the north face on which it was proposed to mount a battery. There was no intention at first of making embrasures in this tunnel, but an opening was found necessary for ventilation, and as soon as it had been made, a gun was mounted in it. By the end of the siege, six such embrasures had been constructed, in which four guns were mounted. The tunnels consist of a whole system of halls embrasures and passages with a total length of nearly 1,000 feet and from them may be seen a series of unique views of the Bay of Gibraltar, the Isthmus and Spain. Descending down the rock from the siege tunnels you pass one of Gibraltar's oldest buildings, the Moorish Castle also known as the Tower of Homage. The castle is a relic of the Moorish occupation of Gibraltar, which lasted for 750 years. It was built in the year 711, when Tariq ibn Ziyad, the Berber chieftain, first landed on the rock. Up until the mid-1990s, it was Gibraltar's prison. Gibraltar has five main beaches and a number of small sandy coves. The largest is Eastern Beach, running along the edge of the flat land which joins Gibraltar to Spain. If you come here on a weekday before 11am or after 3pm, you can almost have the whole beach to yourself. However, Midday and weekend is a different story. It is the only beach to have sunshine all day long, as it's not affected by the shadow of the rock. 
The next most popular is the fishing village of Catalan Bay. The families who live in the village today are mainly descendants of Genoese who followed the British fleet repairing the ships. Sandy Bay is a small bay on the eastern side of Gibraltar, on the far side of the rock from the main city. It is situated to the south of Catalan Bay and is probably quieter than the other beaches as it's the hardest to get to. Fresh water has always been a problem on the rock as it has no natural water supply. Directly above Sandy Bay and the coast road are Gibraltar's large water catchments which are now disused. At the southern end of the city is the cable car, by far the easiest way to get to the top of the rock. The cable car opened in 1966. The journey to the top takes around 10 minutes. When you reach the top, there is a restaurant, bar, souvenir shop and viewing terrace. Depending on what time you arrive at the top, the views may not be what you expect. Gibraltar has a unique weather phenomenon known as the Levant, a large cloud that forms over the summit when warm air from the Mediterranean rushes up the east side, meeting the cooler air from the west. By 11am it is usually burned off and you can start to appreciate the fantastic views over the city, the Straits, Spain and North Africa. On the way down, almost everyone stops halfway to meet Gibraltar's most famous residents, the apes. Known as Barbary apes, they are actually tailless macaque monkeys and are the only free-roaming monkeys in Europe. Currently, there are around 250 on the rock. Legend has it that should the apes ever disappear, the British would leave the rock. To prevent this, for most of the 20th century, a soldier from the resident battalion in Gibraltar was detailed as the keeper of the apes as well as feeding and looking after their welfare, he was responsible for keeping records of all births and deaths, and for naming all the newborn. Since the British Army withdrew from Gibraltar in 1990, the welfare of the Barbary Apes is now in the hands of the Gibraltar Ornithological and Natural History Society and the RSPCA. The inside of the rock is not only accessible through the man-made tunnels, but also through the spectacular cave systems. 
The best is St. Michael's Cave, only a few hundred yards from the ape's den. It is located more than 300 meters above sea level. This is one of Europe's most dramatic natural grottos. St. Michael's Cave has interested visitors to Gibraltar ever since the days of the Romans. The Cathedral Cave was long believed to be bottomless, probably giving birth to the story that Gibraltar was linked to Africa by a subterranean passage over 15 miles long under the Strait of Gibraltar. This cave is now used for concerts with seating for 300. It is said to have perfect acoustics. The cave consists of an upper hall with five connecting passages leading to a smaller hall. Beyond this, a series of narrow halls lead to a further succession of chambers reaching depths of some 250 feet below the entrance. During World War II, the cave was prepared as an emergency hospital, but was never used as such. In 1942, it was decided that an alternate entrance was required to improve air circulation within the emergency hospital, as well as to serve as an emergency exit in case of airstrike. While blasting the rock in order to create an extra opening, another deeper system of caves known as Lower St. Michael's Cave were discovered. In 